when we're thinking about gravitational potential, remember potential energy is always a difference. Always a difference. But sometimes you would like to assign a certain position as zero potential and talk about everything relative to that zero. So the question is, where should we put the zero when we're doing these universal potential energy, or these universal gravity? Well, technically, just like near the Earth, we could put it anywhere. So you may recall near the Earth, we thought, where should it go? Should it be on the floor or the basement or the sea level? You know, you can put it anywhere you want. Usually you think of the floor or just the lowest part of the experiment as zero potential energy. There's something a little more universal for universal gravitation. And you can say, let's set u equal to zero, the absolute potential equal to zero, at infinite separation. Because after all, that's where the gravitational interaction is basically finished. Things are infinitely far apart, the force goes to zero. So by that, we mean the r equals infinity. So the position from one mass to the other. Um, so we'll do that, set this to get an absolute u, and not always have to think about relative uh, potentials. So let's look at what that would mean. Let's see. So we know what delta u is, the change of potential. So let's remember the change of potential is the final potential minus the initial potential. All right. And we've already solved for what that is. That's minus g m source m test, the two masses, times 1 over r final minus 1 over r initial. That was just if we went between any, po any two points. We have a source mass, we move a test mass anywhere we want. That's the formula. But now, let's apply this idea. What we're going to do is um, uh, we're going to start uh, the test mass infinitely far away and then bring it to R. Because if we get this absolute energy going, we won't have to think about initial and final. It'll just be this position at R. Where is it? Where is it? So let's look then. We don't really care about uh, delta u's anymore. We just care about this. It's going to come up to some position r, and that's going to be its absolute energy. So we call that u. That is the energy we're trying to get. Um, its initial was infinitely far away. And we said, let's set that equal to 0. All right, so u minus an initial of 0 is just u, the absolute energy, and then minus g. The two masses, the final r is just r. Right, it gets up to some potential energy r, or some uh, position r. And the initial was infinity, minus 1 over infinity. All right. But just like this is 0, 1 over infinity is also 0. Okay. So that's how we can get the absolute u, the gravitational potential near, uh, if you're one mass near another mass, is minus g m1 m2 over r, like that. And uh, you know we can plot it then and think about what does it look like. If we're not thinking about deltas anymore, we're just going to plot the absolute gravitational potential. I'm going to put the origin up here because it's always negative. So you can see this is basically a 1 over r plot, and it's always negative. So if we plot uh, r like that, oh, I actually should have put it up doesn't matter. So here's your, so what it looks like is you're far away and then it goes to infinity like that. All right. So this is the potential. It's always negative because gravitational attract, uh, interactions are always attractive. Right. So wherever in the universe you are, if there's a mass there and you move towards it, you're going to lower gravitational potential energy. You can only raise your gravitational potential by moving away from something. But if we go towards it, it always goes down. And we define this level as 0 when we wrote it this way. So that's why this is a negative 1 over r. This is what we call things a gravitational well. As you get close to them, you're always losing potential energy, and you can fall into a gravitational well.